Hi everyone, it's me, C Lefty Run. I'm back with my week five Boston Marathon training recap. Uh, I'm gonna kind of skip over some of the like mundane stuff like the easy runs because I want to tell you more about the rain that we experienced here. I did not float off into the water. The city of Long Beach did not float off into the water. Um, and then also the Mesa half. Those are the things I'd like to focus on. And those are more interesting than the mundane. But I can tell you that I did run 43 and a half miles this week. So with this plan, it kind of goes up and down. Like I think last week I had 50 some odd miles. This week I had 43. I was supposed to run 44, but with the half I modified a little bit. I think week six is what I'm working on now. I'm going to be up to 55 miles. So um, anyway, um, on Tuesday, one of the big runs I had this week was hill repeats, uh, two minutes up and down. I had to do it eight times. And then I had a 20 minute warm up, 20 minute cool down. So on Tuesday, so Monday, it's pouring rain and I did my easy run on the treadmill. So nothing really interesting to report there. Um, Sunday, I did my easy run outside before the rain came Tuesday. It was still raining and I was totally convinced. Like, I don't care if it's raining. I'm doing these hill repeats outside. So I get home, I change. There's a hill kind of, it's about five miles from me that I can get two minutes of solid climb. And, uh, it was raining and I got all my gear ready and I headed out the door and it was raining and I was like, okay, this is fine. It's not too strong. And as I'm driving to the location, it starts to pour like so much to where I can't even really see out of my windshield. And I thought to myself, girl, what are you doing? You have a treadmill at home. Why are you going to go? do these hill repeats. You're going to slip on a pine cone and that is going to take you out. Because if you remember last week, a pine cone tried to take me out. And I was convinced that the pine cone was going to be waiting on this hill for me. So I was just like, oh, and then it kind of started to thunder too. And with thunder comes lightning and I don't do running and lightning. So I headed back home and I did um, six and a half miles on my treadmill, two minutes up, and then uh, two minute recovery, two minutes up eight times. Um, I averaged the incline. I switched between four and 5% grade and I uh, controlled my pace between 7.30 and an 8.30 pace, just depending on how exhausted I was. And it was a tough workout. And I wasn't, he said, my plan said uphill at a 10K pace. And I was like, that can't be right. That can't be right. So I kind of just did between 7.30 and 8.30. And hey, I did it. So was it perfect? No. Did I do the best I could in that moment? Yes. And sometimes that's what it's about. Just doing the best you can in the moment. So that was Tuesday. Wednesday, I rested. Um, Thursday, I had to do, I was supposed to do six miles at my goal marathon pace, which was supposed to be about a nine mile run. But because I had the Mesa half marathon on Saturday, I modified that. And I just did eight easy miles before I caught my flight to Long Beach. Now, let me rewind and go back. If you recall, I am in part of a Boston training group through Lou Comfrey running. I've been using his plan since I've qualified for Boston. I've had coaching in the past through other people. No, one other company that will remain nameless. And it totally killed my confidence as a runner. It was not a good experience. So it's very hesitant um, to sign up for any type of coaching again. And um, so I did, after doing Luke's plans for a couple of years, I was like, okay, I think I'll do this Boston group coaching thing. Um, I think I shared before, he did not want me to run the Mesa half. He is not an advocate of you doing races in the middle of a cycle because it takes too much out of your body. And he's just like, just focus on one race and all of your effort needs to go into that one race because you don't want to PR on the wrong race and then blow it for your actual race. He also knew I was coming off of the hip injury and he was just like, nope, I don't think you should do it. Well, you know, I was like, well, I've got airfare. I've got friends I'm meeting. I'm visiting my aunt. It's happening. So um, I had asked him how I should modify for the week. And he was like, well, I'm going to throw the question back at you and let you make that decision because you're deciding to do it. So I was like, fine. Okay. So I decided to do eight easy on 
Thursday. And then uh, I flew out of Long Beach, which if you ever get a chance to fly in and out of Long Beach, do it. It's like the easiest airport in the world. I'm still upset with the community for not making it an international airport. We had an opportunity to make Long Beach an international airport, and it wasn't going to be more flights. It was going to be the same amount of flights, but some of those flights could have been international. And the people that live around me voted it down. So needless to say, it's a very small, convenient airport. Um, my friend dropped me off from drop-off, curb drop-off, to my gate. It was 20 minutes, like check-in and everything. So easy breezy. I love it. So I flew into Arizona. I got my rental car, which by the way, was, I, they upgraded me to a BMW SUV. So I was like, oh, I'm styling this week. Woo. Um, so I was super excited about that, but also kind of nervous. Cause I was like, oh my, I got in the car literally. And I was like, I don't know how to turn this on. I don't know how to go into drive. I had to watch a YouTube video on how to get this car into drive. Gone are the days when you can just hop into any car and know how to drive it. I was all, you know, so I, my car is a 2016 Acura MDX. Like it's, it, even my husband has a newer car too. And that's different than this. And they're all different and weird. But anyway, I managed to make it to my aunt's house in Phoenix. It was great to see her. Um, and then Friday morning before I left to pick up my friend, Carmen, I did four easy miles uh, near her house. And that was a really nice run, nice open roads. The weather was perfection. Um, Chris about 42. So um, yeah, left her and then went to pick up my friend Carmen. Um, if you recall, I met Carmen in 2021 at the Revel Big Bear race. I always meet the nicest people at Revel races. And so I was kind of nervous because I only met her at that race. We chatted I think from miles 17 to 20 and I was running out of gas at 20 and she was D -d 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 talking my ear off. And I was like, girl, you got to go. Like, I can't talk anymore. And I got to focus on finishing. And she finished like five minutes before me. And then I saw her again at the finish and we chatted and we exchanged information and we've kept in touch ever since. So that was the only time I had really, so I found her at the airport, picked her up. We checked into her hotel and she was totally lovely and we had a great time and we connected and it's easy because runners understand runners, right? And your need for like sleep and your weird routines that you have before your race. And we immediately, when I picked her up, she was like, okay, we got to get lunch. And I was like, yes, because she was running the full and I was running the half. So I wasn't like super carb loading. And I kept forgetting that I was running the half only. And I was almost eating like I was running a full. And I kept saying, what are you doing? You're only running a half. Like you don't even have to do anything really that special. So, um, but I haven't ran a half in years. So uh, we went to this pub restaurant. What was it called? Phenomenal, I think it was called. Oh, Unforgettable. Unforgettable. And I'm sitting there eating with her. And this woman comes up to me and her name's... Um, Magna, Magna runs. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, she comes up to me she's like, I follow you. I watch your channel. You guys, I only have 200 followers on, um, in my Instagram, my see lefty run. And maybe I think I'm at like 62 or 63 people on my YouTube two races. I've met people that follow me. I'm like, this is so bizarre. It's not like I have thousands upon thousands but it's nice to know, you know, I just kind of do this for fun and just because I enjoy running and try to connect with other people. But it's nice to know that it does make people do watch and they come up to me. And that, so that was really cool to meet her. Yeah, it was Magna. And she ran the full and she kicked butt on that full too. So Magna, if you're listening to this, congratulations. Um, and I'll see you in Boston. She qualified with Boston too. She said she watched my Charleston videos and it helped her in Charleston. So that was nice. I'm doing a little public service. Okay, on to the next. So we went to the Mesa Expo, which was really good. Um, we watched Coach Paul's talk. Coach Paul does a coaching program for Mesa too. He does coaching programs for all the Revel races. So I always listen to his course preview. Nothing much to preview about the half because it's pretty flat. I think you lose 300 feet of, you know, um, 300 feet you lose, which is a pretty flat course. Like I'll lose that on a long run locally, not even trying. 
Um, so yeah, nothing much to report there. Um, I think the whole, the full, you lose about a thousand and most of that is in the first half or yeah, the first half of the race. So, uh, then Carmen and I went back to the hotel. Uh, we got Olive Garden for dinner. I picked it up and we just ate back at the room. And then the next morning we woke up bright and early and I think around 3.30, had to be on the bus by 4.30. She, it was raining that morning, by the way. I brought the rain with me from California to Arizona. We It wasn't supposed to rain. It was kind of like going in and out of the forecast. And so I woke up around 2.45 naturally, and I could hear the pitter-patter of the rain. I was like, God dang it. And then it just kept coming and coming and coming. And I was like, ah, so we got up, I had my Kodiak cake. I had my beet powder, had all my gear on, like my cold gear. We were going to walk to the buses, but with the rain, I had to drive the car and then all the parking lots were closed. And so that was a little bit stressful. Finally found a place to park. We booked it to the buses. She was on one side. I was on another side. And I stood in line and my friend, Jessica, my coworker was also running the half marathon. So we texted, we met up on the buses and we rode together and we got one of the last buses. I think we got on the bus at like 515. The last bus was at 515, but there was still a full line of half marathoners. So I was like, well, I don't know if this race is going to start on time because look at all those people still waiting for buses and the half buses had to go out and back to pick people up. So we get dropped off. It's raining. It's cold. We're all huddled. They had heating lamps out, very well organized heating lamps out. Race was supposed to start at 630, around 625. Jessica and I gave each other high fives. I'm like, I'm going to my crash. She's like, I'm going to mine. I was like, I'll see you at the finish. So we're waiting, waiting, waiting. And then we hear that the start is delayed and it's going to be delayed to seven o'clock. And I was like, oh, so I was like, well, I'm going to go use the restroom again. So I go to use the restroom, I get out around 6.50 and I'm headed to my corral and people are running. And I was like, oh, oh, did it start? It started. There was no official like do to do national anthem. We're starting like, no. So I was like, oh God, I threw off all my gear. I turned on my watch and then I just started running. And so I, I wasn't sure. I didn't have a strategy for this race really. I knew a couple things. I knew I didn't want to blow it out. Like I didn't want to push too hard and have to recover afterwards because I was like, no, I got to go back home on Sunday and run again. And then on Monday I have to run again. Like I can't take days off of running to recover. Like halves shouldn't really take you long to recover, but if you really race it, that's like a two or three day recovery. And I was like, I can't afford to take it. So I think, I don't know what I predicted I would do. I think I wanted to PR and my strategy was just to kind of go on feel and feel it out and see how I felt. And if I felt good, I would really push it. If I didn't feel so good, I would hold back of it. Now, of course, my period was five days late. So it was supposed to be done. And that morning it hadn't even started yet. And I always feel crappy a few days before my period when I run. It just feels like more effort. So um, I felt pretty good. Um, I wore my Saucony Endorphin Elites and I was nervous about those slipping and sliding. And I'm happy to report that they didn't. They had really good grip. So I will be wearing them in Boston. Are they more elite than the pro? I don't know if I'm elite enough for the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Um, I really like the pro too as well not the pro two, the pro three. And, um, if I had a buy again, I would probably just get another pair of pro threes cause they're cheaper. And I don't really see a substantial difference between the two, but like I said, maybe it's because I'm not elite enough, but, um, yeah. So if you're thinking about one or the other, I really like them both, but maybe save the money and go with the pro three. Uh, however, I will use the elite at Boston cause I do like it. It was very comfortable. My feet felt amazing the whole race. So, um, yeah, so point being, I wasn't sure how I was going to approach this race. I had in the back of my mind that my coach really didn't want me to do this race. And yeah, so what I did was I'll give you, I negative split and I PR. So see, here's my medal. 
yay. Um, I would have liked to get closer to like 145 or even like under 145. It just didn't happen. Uh, I didn't want to, I really wanted to control my effort. I didn't want to push too hard, like I said, for the recovery. And I know what pushing too hard feels like. So my strategy was I'm going to not use music for the first half because that keeps me controlled and I can really tune into my breath. And then at 6.5, that music's going on. So 15 minutes before the start, I had my precision caffeinated gel with 100 milligrams of caffeine. And um, mile four, I had another precision gel, just plain. And um, it's so interesting to run without music because you hear everything, right? I'm hearing people's feet flop on the floor in the rain. I'm hearing people's conversation. Us person near me is playing their own music. It was Shakira's My Hips Don't Lie. I listened to that for two miles and I was kept trying to go a little faster to like get away with it, to get away from it. And then I think that I would and then I hear it again. I'd be like, no. And part of me was like, just turn on your music. But I was like, no, you got to follow your plan. Your plan was six and a half. So it was just funny. All those little things when you're trying to stay focused that can distract you. It was a good lesson in distraction. So I'm um, eventually the hips don't lie. I did lose them and I didn't hear it anymore. So that was good. So I'm going to give you my, my splits, um, for this race. My overall pace was an 815. I finished in 148.05. And, um, I didn't really look at my watch. I was just going by effort. And when I do a lot of races, I don't look at my watch. Unless I'm going so easy to where I'm like, oh, I can push more if my watch says I should, like if my pace is slower and I feel like I can. Um, but based on my effort, I was kind of right where I wanted to be. So I was like, no point in looking at my watch because it's not going to change anything. So my first mile was an 828. Second mile was an 827. Third mile was an 823. Look how lovely this is. 828, 827, 823, just working it down. Fourth mile was an 808. Um, fifth mile was an 811. Right? Am I at mile five? Yeah. Um, sixth mile was an 813. Seventh was an 801. So that's when I turned on the music, right? Um, eighth was 815. Um, nine was 819. 10 was 810, 11 was an 806, 12 was an 8, 13 was a 757, and I did a quarter mile. I did 13 and a quarter, so that quarter was a 705, so I ran a bit over. Um, I wasn't great at following the tangents, and it was pretty straight course. I kept thinking, when's this going to turn? When's it? I like a turn. I like a good turn in a race. Because it, it makes me feel like I'm making progress when I have a turn. So that's one thing I did not like about Mount Charleston is it's a straight shot, I think, until about mile 21 or 22. And uh, Big Bear, you go through, you really have to follow the changes though, Big Bear, but you do a lot of turns. And I like a good turn. I like a turn. Not a lot of turns in this half. So yeah, so I finished in 148.05. My average heart rate was an 155. My average pace was an 815. I still had a lot of gas in the tank at the end. And then I finished and I thought, could I have done more? Could I have done more? Probably. I could have probably done more, but I did not want to risk um, this week building up. I know I have high mileage. And um, yeah, so PR, a negative split. I'm happy about that. Um, and then, you know, Coming off of the hip injury, my hip feels great. Uh, I'm still confused as to why my coach didn't want me, was so anti me running the half when I've been doing like 15 mile hill runs on Saturday. So I was like, how is this any different? Maybe it's because when most people race or most people run a half, they can't really pull back. Little does he know I can. I have no problem pulling back. So I'm not like this type A runner who's got to go out there and crush it every time. Like, that's not me. I was like, I need to find some success. So I'll focus on negative splitting and perhaps PRing because my uh, fastest half prior to was like a 151. So I knew a PR was definitely like in reach without me killing myself. And it was nuts because I think I passed the 
150 pacer at not mile 10 ish. And I was coming up on the pacer and I was like, what? I wonder what group that is. You know, and I was like, wait, 130. I couldn't really see very well. 130, 150. What is it? I was like, can't be 130. Like I'm not passing the 130 group. So yeah, it was the 150 people. And I was like, oh gosh, thank gosh I passed the 150 people. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I wanted to PR. So uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. I flew home on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. I ran my six like a, like a good little athlete, followed my plan. And actually, my, I, my, I actually got a phone call during the run and I answered it and I paused my watch. And then my husband called and then, cause he was locked out of the house and then I forgot to resume it for like a mile. And so I ended up running an extra mile just to get my watch to say six and not five. And so, um, and then I ran today. So I'm back on running track for Boston. So that was my, um, I saw my friend Jessica at the finish who ran the half with me um, when we didn't run it together, but you know, we rode the bus together and then at the finish, we got a nice little picture that you'll see in the thumbnail for the video. And yeah, I had a really good time. Um, I'm glad I did it. And so back to training this week. So uh, Mesa half, my thoughts, would I do it again? No. I think California where I live has plenty of great races, especially halves that are local to me. I think if you live um, in Arizona, it's a great race, but it was not scenic at all. Like it was kind of industrial and just you know, like typical like roads and streets. And uh, I do like scenic races if I'm going to travel to them. So uh, there's a lot of hype around Mesa, a lot of people PR in Mesa, and I could see how that could happen, but I don't know that. And my friend Carmen did not love the full, but she didn't do like, she didn't have a great race. So when you don't have a great race, we, you're like, oh, that marathon stuff, you know, it was terrible and I didn't like it. So she didn't have the race that she had envisioned that she had trained for. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just don't have the race date. So she didn't love it. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I thought about her when I finished my half and I thought, oh gosh, Carmen still has to go through the half that I just went through and it's not cute. It's not motivating at all. So, and I knew her first half was better than the second half. So um, yeah, so that's my update for week five. I can't believe I'm already on week six. I'm almost halfway done. So I'm really happy the body's feeling good. Really happy the shoes worked out. Uh, feeling was good. So I think after my marathon cycles, I'll start tackling the half. I'd like to get down into like the 139 range. That would be great. But I feel like I have to really dedicate a cycle to that. So we'll see later on, but not now. All right, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.